Hello friends. In this video, we will discuss about the data frames, how to import data frame from a working directory, and to do operations on data frames. But before that, uh, let's understand what actually a data frame is. In Excel, you might have seen, you have already seen these sort of tables. So in this table, all these are field names. A student roll number, a student name, a student course, a student mobile, mail ID and address. So this is a student table. So the first row is field names or we can say variables. These are our variables. When we make entity relationship diagram, in that case, these are attributes. Okay. So these are my field names and th these field names contain the same type of same type of data types. In row number, as we can see, all the values are numeric. In student name, we can see all the values are characters. In mobile number, again numeric. And in mail ID, it can be combination of letters or uh, special symbols, numeric values, alphanumeric values, like that. So, all these are fields. In this table, if I say there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 fields we have and these are field names. So, when we take, a, take data from each field, let us suppose I have taken this 2, this Mohit from a student name, MCA from a student course, mobile number from a student mobile, mail ID and address from different fields. So, this is known as one record. So, in this way, we have 8 records in this table. As we can see. So these are the records. So records are the combination of data from different fields. So these records are also known as observations. Sometimes you will heard observation. So do not get confused. Records are observations are only records. One more thing we have to notice here that in this table, all these data, they are related to each other. Role number two is associated with Mohit and Mohit is doing MCA. So this MCA is associated with Mohit. This mobile number belongs to Mohit and this is the mail ID of Mohit. So all these data points, all these data, they all are connected. There is some relation between these data. If I say Deepak, BTEC, mobile number, mail id address so they all are in a relation that is why this is also known as relational database so the combination of records which is a table this is known as data frame in python in different languages you will see different name in uh, excel we say table in SQL also we say it table, in R we say it data set, here we call it a data frame. So this is the data frame and we will discuss about the data frame. And one more thing, this is the, this is one of the difference between matrix and a data frame. In a matrix, there is no field names, only row, row number and column numbers are there and there is no relation between the elements but here there is a relation okay so this is a data frame so let's see what operations we can do with a data frame and finally uh, in data science we deal with data frames so data frames so when we have to deal with data frames we need to import we need to call one library and that library is our pandas. So I'm going to import pandas as we have to do many operations on the data frame. So if I, if I uh, say data set sometime or data frame or table, so consider it as a data frame. So uh, this panda, when we have to import data frame 
or to do some operation in data frame. So each and everything is inside this pandas. This is a library in Python. So I have imported pandas as pd. pd is just an object. I have given pd as a name to the object and pd is having all the characteristics, all the functionalities of pandas. So I don't have to type uh, pandas every means I don't, uh, I will not uh, import pandas uh, every time or use pandas this word. So I'll use only pd and pd will be having all the functionalities of pandas. <clears throat> when you have your file in your working directory, so you can import that file or uh, to read that file, let us suppose that file is in CSV, comma separated value. Okay. And uh, I will write this command pd dot read underscore csv if that file is in excel format so you will write dot xlsx okay so to check your working directory let me run this command first if i run this and check your working directory working directory as we have already discussed in the previous lectures that working directory is the place is uh, the folder where we keep all our data sets and Whatever we have uh, done in a notebook, we save it. Okay, so it will remain in, in our working directory. If you have created working directory, it is well and good. And uh, if you have not created, you can by default check with, where is your working directory. So to check working directory, the command is pwd Python working directory. So if I run this, so this is my working directory. Desktop Python wd. I show you as well. Now see, this is my working directory, Python WD. Okay, and inside this, I have all the data sets and whatever work I have done. So it is, it becomes very easier. It becomes very easier to import a file from working directory. Okay, if you want uh, to give the full path uh, of the working of your data set. Okay, in that case, you can import OS. OS. Uh, you can understand operating system and uh, it provide many functions to interact with the file system. Either uh, if you want to change your working directory, you will write this command OS dot chdir. Ch means change and dir means directory. If you want to change your working directory and inside this, you can give the full address of working directory. Okay. But the good practice is that you have already created a working directory and inside that working directory you have your data frame okay so i know that this is my working directory and here i have my data frame so friends let's import our one csv file from our working directory so this is the name of the file at the last you can see dot csv this is comma separated value file okay so you have to write this command pd dot read underscore csv in double quotes you will write the full path of uh, your uh, data frame okay and do remember do not forget to write dot csv the extension is very important so if i run this let's see this is the data frame these are the variable or field names uh, as i told you earlier ID, gender, race, school, program, read, write, math. These are subjects, SST, social science subjects. So these are subjects and these are the sequence, uh, row, uh, serial numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So total we have till 199 from 0. It means we have 200 records or 200 observations. Okay. So and these are the values. These are the data. Okay. So this is the data frame. Uh, I suggest you that once please go through your data set okay and uh, see what are the variables over there in your data frame so these are the data frame this is my data frame now i am putting this data frame this is the last line last command which we wrote and uh, i am putting this into an object that is my ds my data set or my data frame any name 
according to your interest you can put the variable name okay so uh, the data set the complete data set will come inside this my ds so i'm going to run this line so if i run this control sorry shift plus enter and let's check what this my ds have so to check you can write this head if you write my ds dot head it will show you the first five observation or first five records okay this is just to check so if i run this see it has shown me the first five records 0 1 2 3 4 total five records and with the field names in the same way if you want to see the last five records you can use dot tail this is a function dot tail if i run this you will see last five records okay so if you want some information about that data set so you can write my ds dot info so this uh, function will give you the information about that data set. so this is the information that uh, these are the column numbers field names id gender race might be this is sibling school program read write math sst not null all the values are there there is no empty cell and data type all are integer type all are integer type okay but uh, i recommend this command this is a very beautiful command and it will show you uh, almost all the descriptive statistics about this data frame so what we have to uh, do only write my ds dot describe so if i run this now see id gender race all the field names are here and now see count total count 200 so we can see that uh, in each field all the values are 200 means there is no missing value there is no missing value the mean of id is 100.5 gender gender is uh, i'll show you now see gender 111 or 000 you will see 01 0 is for male 1 is for female so we have uh, in the data set it is already coded it's already coded into numeric values uh, males into 0 and females into 1 okay so in this describe function gender it is also showing me and race sibling school writing marks math marks math 1 math 2 so all these marks it is showing me along with this uh, then we have standard deviation it is showing standard deviation for each and every variable minimum value 25 percent means first quartile you all know the quartile, interquartile, uh, quartile range and all. 50%, then 75%, third quartile, and the maximum value. Maximum value this data uh, is having in any specific field. So maximum value in math 1 marks are 75. The highest marks in math 1 are 75. And in the same way, if you see the minimum, so maximum mark, minimum marks in math 1 are 33. Okay. So we can see it has shown us count, total number of count, mean, standard deviation, minimum value, first quartile, 50% of that, third quartile, 75% and the maximum value. So this is a very beautiful function, describe. It will describe the overall descriptive statistics of your data frame. If you just want to see the columns or the field names you have, so columns. Now it is showing me firstly we have id then gender race so all these field names we have now if you want to see the type of my ds which we have created this my ds if you want to check the type if i run this so it is inside pandas it is data frame okay so this is a data frame if you want to see the shape of this data frame we have already uh, used this shape uh, function when we discussed uh, data structure in the previous videos okay so if i run this it will show me the number of rows and number of columns 
See, 200 rows we have, 200 observations or records and 11 columns means 11 fields we have, 11 fields, total 11 fields. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and last one SST 11 and uh, total observations we have 200. To check data types of different variables in a data set, if you want to check the data type, although in this data frame, uh, they all are integer type, but uh, uh, you will encounter data data frames where you will see uh, character type, num uh, numeric type, okay, so or boolean type, true false. So if I run this, so all are integer type. Okay, now if I am interested in only a specific variable. So you will you will use uh, a square bracket, okay? If you want to access any particular variable uh, from a data frame, we will use square bracket and in double quotes because the name is in characters, okay? So we will write. Let us suppose gender we want. So if I run this, so this is my serial number zero one two three, and this is the data zero. It means uh, uh, male then female male 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 female 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 okay so in this way you can uh, you can check any specific uh, variable but uh, good practice is always copy it from here okay from uh, actually what happens sometimes you write If I write math one, so it will throw an error. Why? Because there is no math one with a small m in our data frame. The name is like this capital math. So as we know that Python is a case sensitive language. Okay. So if I run this, you see the marks scored by students in math one: 41, 53, 54, 57. Okay. So you can access any particular variable. Uh, in gender only, in gender uh, variable only inside the data frame. If you want to see only five records, it will. You can use like this dot head. Okay, but square bracket, it is mandatory. Dot head. If I run this, it will show me only first five records. Okay. Uh, let me do it over here. If you want to create, uh, add new cell, so select any cell. After that, you can click on this plus icon, it will add a new cell like this we have. So if I write my ds dot head and if I run this, this is the command, uh, this is the output. So these are our, our variables. But out of these, if I want to create a new variable, if I want to fetch out or to take different variables, and to make a new data frame. So what you can do, you can write my ts, but you have to use double brackets. Okay, double bracket. Inside the data frame, you are selecting specific uh, variables, which are id, gender, and math1. And I'm going to save all this in my new ds. So I'm creating a new data frame from this data frame. Okay, the variables which I am interested in. So, new ds uh, will be the combination of only these three variables. So, let me run this and let's check what the new ds holds, new data structure, data uh, set holds. Now, see, only these values have been taken id, gender, and math1. Okay, and this is my new variable, new data frame. All the records from 0 to 199, 200 rows and 3 columns. Okay. In spite of using head and tail command to see records or observations, if I want any records between the sequence number 8 and 15, so I can write like this. So this uh, column, as we all know in Excel also we use this and uh, this is known as range in Excel. So you have to write my ds in square bracket 8 to 15. So if I run this, now see 
sequence number 8 to sequence number 14 okay here we have written 15 but it is showing me 14 so that is why it happens in python that you have to uh, if i want 8 to 14 i will write 15 if i want 8 to 15 so i will write 16 if i run this in the output the last column instead of 14 you will see 15 okay if i run this now see 16 but the first one will be included always and the last one will be 1 minus this you have given in the range so specific records i am not uh, getting only first 5 records or last 5 records through head and tail function you can do it uh, uh, you can customize accordingly if i want to locate a specific records in data set as you can see here also when we uh, when we receive this output all these are in a sequence 8 9 10 11 12 so these are in a sequence but what if we if i if i want uh, records which are not in sequence randomly i want to pick in that case for location you will use dot loc so my ds dot loc in double bracket you will write 1 and 5 only these records you want serial number 1 serial number 5 so let me uh, run this now see only serial number 1 and 5 records I have received. So it has located these observations. Now, now I want those records only where math 1 marks are greater than 60. Okay. And you will, uh, mostly you will encounter these sort of uh, operations you have to do with the data frames. So what you will do? My DS. We are dealing with this data frame. Inside this, again you have to write my ds and in square bracket the variable name in double quotes my ds math1 and the marks which are greater than 60. Okay, this you will type if I run this, it will show me observations of uh, only those observations in which maths1 marks are greater than 60. So let me run this now. See. These are all the observations where math1 marks are greater than 60, 71, 62, 75. You will not see uh, any observation where math1 marks are less than 60, okay, as you can check over here. But you want to see there are how, how many records are there with math1 marks which are greater than 60. You want to count as well, okay. Now see it's a big record. You don't want to count uh, uh, manually. So in that case, as we all know, uh, this function dot shape. So after this coding, you have to only write dot shape. If I run this, you will see 44 and 11. 11 observations we all know, sorry, 11 fields or uh, variables we have. And these are 44 records. There are 44 observations out of 200 where students scored 44 uh, sorry uh, uh, above 60 marks so there are 44 students those have scored more than 60 marks okay now if i want to see how many girls have scored more than 16 math one okay so for and for multiplication we use this operator and operator and for or which is addition we use pipe which is above your enter key uh, on your keyboard above the enter key okay so uh, but when we are using this operator it means both the criteria should be met means math marks should be greater than 60 and gender should be equals to equals to zero my dear friends uh, you might be uh, noticing why I have written two times equals to. If I write single equals to, let us suppose I'll show you. If I write x is equals to 10, what it means? It means I am assigning this value 10 to this variable x. This is, in this case, this single equals to is assignment operator. We are assigning this value 10 to this x. But when we use 
equals to equals to zero. It means I am just checking whether gender is equals to equals to zero. I am just comparing it is equals to or not. For example, uh, this x is equals to ten. Okay. If I run this, and in the uh, next cell, I am checking what this x hold. So if I run this, I will see ten. Okay. But after that. If I want to check whether x equals to equals to ten, if I run this, see the output. It's boolean output true. This is true. X is yes. It is equals to ten. But if I write eleven, x is equals to equals to eleven. I'm just comparing. No, x is equals to ten, and I'm comparing that it is equals to eleven. So it is false. Okay. So this is the meaning of double equals to. That I'm just checking whether uh, it is equals to that specific value or not. Okay, so the code will be my ds and inside the bracket my ds math one marks are greater than sixty and and my ds gender is equals to equals to zero. So it will show me only records where Gender is equals to equals to zero. Okay, so the zero is coded for girls. Okay, and uh, let me run this command. Now see, math ma math one marks are greater than sixty, and gender you can see all gender are zero. Male Respondent or records male students marks are not given here. Only girl students with marks greater than sixteen maths. Okay, so this is how. Again, you want to see the how many girl students uh, those have scored more than sixty marks in maths. So at the last, you will add only this shape dot shape. Okay, uh, one more thing, friends. Let us suppose uh, I received this output, but this is a very long output, and it is, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, lengthening my page. My page is becoming very lengthy. So you can double click on output, so it will be hidden. Okay, so in this way you can hide the output. So if I want shape, at the last I will write dot shape, and if I run this line, see twenty one records. Okay, because uh, I have taken only girls record. That is why only 21 girls. Earlier it was maximum because it was combination of both girl and boy. Now let us suppose we have the race value in some list, and according to that list, we want uh, list of race value. We want to fetch records from my data set or data frame. So this is my list one. List one is equal to one and three. So what you will do? Race is equals to dot. Now you will type is in list one. Whatever uh, race value I have. Okay, this is not the sequence number one or three. This is about uh, data in the variable. Let me show you. Plus. Now see race values are four, four, four. Or let me do it in tail. Might be we can see some other case as well. So now see two, four, four, four. So these are data inside a variable race. So I want only those records where race is one and three. So what you will do? You will type dot is in list one. Whatever data. I have given inside this list one, so it will show me. If I run this, now see, it will show me only those data where race is only either three or one. You will not see two or four. Okay. Only one and three. So again, I am double click to hide.
No. Okay. Uh, now this is very important function to find out number of boys and girls from my ideas. Okay. So value count. What it will do? This function value count. It will. Uh, it will give you the frequency. It will give you the frequency of the data, different data inside this variable gender. Or, or, or for any variable, if you want to check the number of frequency you have in that variable, you, we will use value count and we will use this uh, function many times. In future, you will see I'll be using this function many times. So this is a very important function. In data visualization, I will create uh, bar plots. In that time, in that that case, uh, it becomes very useful. So if I run this, now see. For one, for males, it is 109. There are 109 records or observations out of 200. And for girls, 91 girls are there. Okay, so it will give you the frequency. Now, now let's perform some uh, descriptive statistics and some other functions. So this time I, I will import some other, uh, you know, uh, data set. So here I'm again importing, although I've already uh, imported as PD, so I can use PD, but still I'm running this. And now my DS. So the, uh, earlier also uh, the object name was my DS, but now my DS will hold this data set which I'm giving right now. So pd.read.csv. I um, want this data frame from my working directory. It will directly fetch it because it's there in my working directory. So by, that is why I'm directly fetching it. I'm reading it. Okay, so if I run this and now, now let's see what this my data structure, uh, my data set holds. Now see, this is uh, the uh, I have uh, uh, run this command dot head so first five records so these are the variable price living area bathrooms bedrooms lot size age how many how many uh, you know what is the age of that house and the fireplace and these are the records we have okay so uh, it is always a good practice to understand your data frame first and and, and to recognize the variables in your data frame. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables. Okay. So now if I want the mean of price, mean of price. Now what is this price? This is the price of different house, different houses, okay, or flats, we can say. So price. So I want to check, uh, want mean. Although you can use describe function, it will show you each and everything, but still, uh, individually, if you want to do, you can write my ds dot price. Uh, see, P is capital and here P is capital. It has to be same. Otherwise, it will show, it will show an error, throw an error. So my ds dot price dot mean, if I run this, this is the mean, this is the average. Okay. Now, for median, you can write dot median and we can run this command. We'll get median of price of all the flats. So median is 151917. For mode, dot mode. I want mode of bathrooms. Okay. So see, this is my variable in the data frame. Dot mode. Okay. Sorry. So if I run this. See, 2.5 maximum bathrooms are 2.5, two full bathroom and one small bathroom. Okay. If I uh, want mean for all variable in a data set, so my ideas dot mean. So price mean, average, living area average, bathroom average, bedroom average, age, everything, average of each and everything all the variables right now mean is mean is calculated on one variable column wise column wise it is calculating how column wise 
I am getting mean of price only. So how it is calculating column wise? Let me show you. New ideas. So for price, it is calculating like this. This is the one by one data. This is another data, another data. So column wise, column wise, it is calculating. But what if you want to calculate row wise? Although in this data frame, there is no logic to calculate uh, any descriptive uh, descriptive uh, you know function uh, row wise. But still, if you want to do that, in some cases you might be requiring this function. So if you will use this function, uh, use this command access. Okay. If you want mean row wise from a data set, we'll use access. So if access is equal to zero. It will calculate column wise, which is by default. And if access is equal to one, it will perform row wise. So I run this. This is same as which we uh, got earlier because this is mean of price value column wise. So if access is zero, it will by default it is calculating zero. Uh, column wise, but if you want row wise, you will write access is equals to one inside the mean function. Okay, do remember inside the mean function access is equals to one. If I run this, now see for all the records, for all the all the rows observation zero one two till one zero four six, it is showing me the mean. Okay. So, if we have any missing value in a data set, all, uh, although we have already checked, there is no such missing value. Uh, no. You see, all the values are there. Count, uh, we have seen describe function, count is 200. There is no missing value. But still, there is some missing value. Uh, okay. Let me show you this one also. Ne not head only my ideas. Or if I use describe, describe. Okay. Uh, sorry. Now see the count is 1047. In the data set, 1047 rows or records or observations are there. So all are having 1045 records uh, there is nothing like that uh, in this uh, this data is missing so this will be having if this data is missing one data is missing so total number of count will be 1446 in, instead of 47 but if there is some missing value in your data frame and still you want to calculate so you want to skip that missing value so you can write like this my data set dot mean access is equal to one escape n a not available is equal to true what it will do if there is some missing value still it will calculate the mean so if i run this command shift plus enter now see let me show you the answer okay for the quantile If I run this, I'll get mean. You might be wondering why mean because I have not specified which quantile I want. Okay, you want first 25% of data, so you can write 0.25, it will show you first 25% of the data. And if you want the half of the data, 50%, 0 0.50, second quartile. Okay, in the same way, if you want third one, you can write 0 0.75. In the same way, if you want variance in the price variable, so this will be the command my ds dot price dot variance var. This is the function. This is the variance. If you want standard deviation of any particular variable, if I want uh, price standard deviation dot std. So if I run this. This is the standard deviation for skewness. 
how much data is skewed so dot skew you will get the output okay one thing which i want to mention over here that be very careful when you use mode we cannot use mode anywhere or everywhere okay we use mode only with discrete values okay and that is why i used mode with bathroom data set so we cannot use mode with continuous values it is of no sense so my dear dot bathroom dot value count value count will show you the number of uh, bathrooms uh the frequency of different bathrooms we have so if i run this see 2.5 means two big bathrooms and one small bathroom 2.5 the count is 373 that is why we got answer 2.5 uh, for the mode okay because the maximum frequency is 2.5 bathroom then we have 1.5 bathroom one once so so th these small things we have to keep in mind that uh, never use mode with the continuous variable values or variable it should be with discrete variable okay so this is all about uh, uh, the data frames some other tricks that how we can operate or how uh, what are the different functions we can perform on a data set or data frame we will uh, discuss them accordingly according to the need uh, or according to the interest in future okay so till then please uh, go to the